There's a lot of ways to tie your leader to your hook. In a previous video, I showed you guys that I really like a loop knot as well as a uni knot. But Captain Tim here likes to snell. He's the best sneller I've ever seen. And in this video, he's gonna show you exactly how he snells right here onto this circle hook for catching big tarpon, sailfish, tuna, wahoo, all those pelagics. Here we go. Oh, it's a big fish. All right guys, Captain Tim here. As you've seen in other videos on realreports.com describing the difference between circle hooks and J hooks, uh, when I'm tarpon fishing and sail fishing, I prefer circle hooks. Uh, this is an example of an owner circle hook here. As uh, Captain Mike described in previous videos, you, you really need to match your hook uh, the circle hook gap needs to match the baits you're fishing, okay? Since I'm fishing large mullet these days, uh, I go with a hook that's got a gap this big. This is a 7.0 hook, okay? So I get asked quite a bit how I'm snelling my hooks because you can notice by this eye, that is a snelled eye, okay? So you obviously can't get by with a loop knot or any other kind of, of knots. The line has to go through the eye and down the shank of the hook. And I'm going to show you how I make it happen. Just know, there is more than one way to snell a hook. This is just the way that I prefer to do it. Do whatever feels comfortable. So what I'll typically do is uh, I'm going to just give an example with 80-pound uh, mono here for a leader line, okay? Hey, here's how we start. Take your hook. Remember, it's got to have a snelled eye. Run your leader line through. Make sure you give yourself plenty of tag in, okay? So notice how I'm pinching the, the line against the eye here, just so it doesn't back out and, and it doesn't move around on you too much. Now here's the move that most people get wrong, okay? All you have to do is flip the tag in around and pinch it as a circle. Let me show you that again. Take your tag end, it should double right back on itself. Notice how my thumb and forefinger are grabbing it? There's a loop right there, okay? All I like to do is I like to come tight a little more just to keep the loop almost the same as the diameter of the bite of the hook. If everybody can see that. This is the hard part, guys. Now you're, now you're set. Now all you have to do is run the tag end through the loop. Let's show you that again. Here's your loop. You're pinching it to keep it in place. Tag end right through. And then what I like to do on each turn I don't know if you guys saw that. When I bring it through, I slide that turn up the shank of the hook and pinch it to hold it in place. Get ready for the next one. So I'll go through again, slide it up, go through again, slide it up, okay? Depending on the leader line that you're using, the smaller that diameter, the more turns that I'd prefer that you make. So this is 80 pound mono, so I'll be able to get away with a few turns. As you make your turns and pull through, make sure you slide. Notice how you see my index finger moving the turns up the shank. That's gonna make life easier when you finish the knot. So this is probably a good number. Again, the amount of tag that you have on the end will dictate how many, how many turns you wanna make. Okay. This is what we're at right now. You can't really see from the camera angle, my fingers are hiding it, but you can see the turns on the back side of the hook. Now, all you're going to do, make sure you pinch the whole contraption. Now you start to pull on this end, on the end to the rod, and slowly work it towards the eye. I don't know if you guys can see that. Now what you also may want to do is take a little tug on the tag end that is up against the shank. Now, most cases, this should be enough. This shouldn't pull, but here's how I like to finish it. I'll take one or two turns down the shank with the tag in. Get my manly snips. I'll 
hold this end against the edge of the hook and you just finish it just give it a little extra pull okay and that's it so now I like to trim the tag end close to the scent to the end of the hook you don't want you don't want to tarpon or anything feeling that little jab from the knot and that's a snell knot on a circle hook So one other thing about snelled eyes and circle hooks that I prefer, again, this is completely by preference, especially when I'm tarpon fishing and snook fishing, a snelled eye, it creates more of a stiff rig. And when you're coming tight on the fish and when you're holding tight on the fish, it seems to me that the snelled hooks grab and hold better. You maintain connection to the fish a lot more. And as long as you fight the fish properly, uh, I've had great hookup success and great hookup ratios, and I've had great catch ratios fishing hooks like this. Quite honestly, I almost exclusively fish snell-dyed hooks, especially when I'm fishing circle hooks. So I hope this helps. I hope you get to use these hooks, use these knots, and catch a bunch out there. This is Captain Tim. Go get them. All right, so you heard it there from Captain Tim. He does snook, tarpon, all that inshore stuff and he is mostly using a snelled knot on all his hooks, all his circle hooks. Even when we're out there on the beach and we're catching those snook and the tarpon time, he's using a snelled knot on those little, little circle hooks and he's catching a ton of fish. And you can just see here, it's a beautiful knot and it works really well. So thank you, Tim, for coming out here and showing us how to do that. My pleasure, Captain Mike. All right. Twin, and Twin Stigator Charters, guys. If you're looking to get out, get on a fat one, let me know. And you see here, we got the infamous rod <laughs> tim's got a bunch of these and he fishes the heck out of these this thing's probably caught a thousand tarpon for all i know just absolutely incredible this this is a timeless reel i mean it's been around forever but still an awesome reel the lever drag is in my opinion a lever drag on a circle hook is a must-have it's i agree uh soon. much prefer to star drags again the big fish that i've caught on setups like this or versus a spinner, I just feel like you shock them too quick when you close the bell. With a lever drag, you can inch it up there slowly. That's the thing. With yeah. a lever drag, you can make incremental adjustments to your drag throughout the fight, right? I mean, you can go almost to the pin when you're close and really put the hammer down, but during the middle of the fight, you have almost infinite adjustment abilities with a lever drag versus a straw drag and especially a spinning reel. Spinning reel, you're not sure how many pounds of pressure you've got throughout the fight. This, you can even measure it before you even leave the dock and know I've got you know, eight pounds of pressure here, 10 pounds of pressure here. You've got everything mapped out. And talking about your snell knot, you said you like it because it's a more solid kind of connection to the hook. So when you're getting that bite, you're really not going directly to strike on the, on the circle hook. You're inching it up there. So right now it's in free spool. He's letting that fish eat. Right. And he's just inching it up there. And that hook is just working its way till it finds the edge. And when he finds the edge, then he's sticking them and he's reeling tight on it. And you it. can only do that with a lever drag conventional reel. So that's why Tim has made these his go-to tarpon rods. They're a little bit more advanced for his anglers on board that don't have experience. And for right. that, he's got spinner rods on board for you guys as well. But these are how you catch a fish. And you can see here, we caught this huge tarpon. 
probably 150 pounds over there in Key Biscayne. Steve right. got on it. They got a nice release on it. Yep. Just an awesome fish. He did a great job on that fish. You also notice here, got a top shot of mono on top of the, on top of the braid that we've got underneath the reel. Hopefully on Steve's fish, we did get to the braid because that was a stud and that thing really took us for a ride. Most of the time we're not getting past the top shot because we're doing a good job on the fish. Ooh, do we do do we dare do a mono versus braid debate? I've had a lot of people ask about that in the comments. I'm gonna stay out of that one, Captain and, Mike, if uh, I can. We'll do that one day for you guys. I'm Captain Mike with Reports.com. This is Captain Tim with Twinstigator Charters. Tight lines, guys. I love this setup. Beautiful rod. Tried and true. Mm. Steve had this thing bent over so good. Mm.